So the clone tool works a lot like the mixer brush from Photoshop, if you're familiar with that. So here I'm on Photoshop, um, and usually this is how mixer brush is used. Um, you take a like existing area of your painting and you kind of eye drop it, then you can copy the same area using a different brush texture, depends on what you want. So here in Krita, um, the example brush that they use is kind of similar to the stamp tool. So you can search clone tool or you can just search clone and look for this brush. But in Photoshop, um, when you go over here, it reacts similarly to the stamp tool. It basically works like this. You eye drop a certain area, then you can copy that area. And so you can kind of copy and paste certain parts of your painting to another area, just like how I did it here. And in Krita, it's basically the same thing. Say, let's make a square, uh, a green block thing here. Now I select drone tool. Now, um, depends on your settings, but I have uh, set mine to control key as my eyedropper tool. And um, basically you can just search over here on the canvas input settings um, over here. So sometimes it's control, sometimes it's alt. Depends on your settings over here. You can just um, test out whichever works. I'm not totally sure on that, but um, now that I have basically told Krita, hey, I'm going to be copying from this area. Now, if I like line up my cursor and start painting, you'll see that um, it will be copying the same source or it will move the source as I move my brush along with it. This isn't really useful in terms of like digital painting because um, what's what's stopping you from basically lassoing this area, copying it, moving it around and like you can even have the freedom to transform it and rotate it and everything. So I'm not sure why you would use it in this way. And the more interesting way of using the clone tool, in my opinion at least, is creating really, really complex textures in such a short amount of time. I think that's like the defining feature of the mixer brush or the clone tool. So over here, you can see that um, because of how the mixer brush works, you can get a lot of um, intricate textures by just like going over the same area and copying a different part and all that. So you can get really, really gritty textures in such a short amount of time. And you can do that in um, the clone tool as well, but we have to change a bit of its settings. So if you have your clone brush selected um, and also have the brush tool selected over here on the left side and have this selected, you can go over here, click on this like area, it will bring this up. So let's go to the painting mode and remove this one, source point move, because that's the one that's making it move as you um, paint and move your brush. So we don't want that. And um, you can sometimes turn this on, but for now we won't um, just to make uh, things clear. Then instead of the like soft round brush, we're going to get uh, an interesting texture maybe something like this could work then you can change the spacing but the hard part is you can't see how it's going to affect the canvas so we're gonna test it out first yeah something like that could work the texture that you're painting depends heavily on the brush tip that you selected say if you get a brush tip like this um if you kind of paint that in you can see that it's painting this area but over here so what if we made a more complex shape or complex texture over here and we sample from this area now if i click on it you can see that it's trying to copy um what we just did here so you can see there's like a brown on the left side a brown on the right side a green on top and the yellow on the bottom and from here you have access to basically um lots of textures depending on how you paint so if we paint downwards you can see that i have a green streak 
with a brown on the left. If I paint upwards, we're gonna see that yellow more and some green and some browns. If I go to the left and right, you can see more of that brown, less of the brown if I move from right to left. So that's basically how it works. So how can you use this from uh, for your painting? Well, um, we can make really, really interesting organic textures from it. So I have um, a new layer here and let's make some sort of bush shape, something like that. Doesn't have to be perfect. Then let's add some shading real quick. So I'm gonna add some sort of light source, then some shadow. Now, if we select back our clone tool, then select say a more organic brush, something like this. Then actually we can also change the rotation and um, mirror it, but that's not really important for now. If we sample say from the shadow area, then paint on the light area, we can have this kind of texture. We can also change the spacing a bit so that it's more sparse, something like that. Yeah. So we sample from the shadow, put it into the light, sample from the light, put it into the shadow. Then let's turn off alpha lock and you can see you can create really interesting like light and shadow patterns by using this type of brush because your source already has light information on it. So if you're painting a shaded leaf, uh, what's going to happen is you're kind of rendering and copying, pasting uh, entirely rendered leaf multiple times. And that's how you create these interesting textures, which is really, really cool. So we just did that in like what, um, in a minute and we already created something really complex in terms of textures. If I were to hand paint this um, normally, it would take a lot of time as you can um, tell, because we're gonna have to individually paint these um, sections of light and shadow. But since we have the mixer brush, that already does that for us. And that's basically how the mixer brush is really, really powerful. Um, not just in leaves, you can also make um, clouds, rocks. Let's use rocks, for example. So let's erase that and let's make a rock shape like that. Shade it in, some subtle shading at least. Doesn't have to be perfect, something like that. Then get the clone brush and let's look for a rocky mask that we can play with. Maybe something like this can be useful. So we're sampling from the lit area, putting it on the um, shadow area. Now we're sourcing from the shadow area, putting it on the lit area. We can change the drawing angle or the rotation to react with the drawing angle. That way um, it depends on where you're moving your brush towards. So we can make this a bit bigger, make more complex shapes. And now um, we already have a cool looking um, rock texture going on and because of how the mixer brush works we can turn off alpha lock and that way i can really quickly create a new rock over here on the other side now i just have to clean it up find the shape a bit more or even say change a brush change our brush tip to something more blocky something like this or something like this maybe now um get to have these really really interesting textures um just by sourcing or sampling from um this this small piece of rock you can actually kind of create like a cliff wall using this and i've done that many many times kind of make a cliff wall out of um, a small rock then you just copy and paste that now you're like on your way to making like a large scale mountain something like that that's basically how I would use um, the clone tool. Also, um, make sure you save this. So save new brush preset on this brush editor. That way you don't have to change all the settings um, when you do this next time. I actually have my own, uh, my own brush. And if I reset it, this is how it looks. I have a really interesting like concept art texture. And what I can do is just use that and create really complex shapes and forms and whatnot. One other thing is you can use the clone tool to make 
more traditional looking effects they go back to our clone tool over here and let's use a more traditional looking brush tip say something like this change the spacing so something like this you can kind of smear paint around and has this really really nice effect but i'm not really sure why you would use it like this unless you really want to capture a texture already inside your painting because otherwise you'd have a much better time using rgba brushes which basically does the same thing and you have a lot more control over the color uh, that you're painting so um, you can use this and make it pure yellow or pure green instead of over here uh, under on our clone tool um you're stuck with basically the the paint already on the canvas so if you want to capture that type of texture and you want to kind of smear it um, you can also use the clone brush for that but otherwise if you just want the traditional texture of painting with like traditional brushes if you just want the texture um, then you're fine with using rgba brushes so yeah hope this was useful and thanks for watching if you want to learn more about how to use brushes in krita i have made a video specifically for that and you can click on it over here or click on it through the video description